is practically you can do each and everything required with functions right so one of the most used thing is like you pass an argument to a function which is an input you do some task inside the function and finally you return something from the function which is an output right so what you can return from the function let's write a very simple function like function test me it takes an argument let's say input and what we do is basically we do something like return and we'll return a string we'll say testing whatever the input we are just going to print right now this is my very simple function which takes an input and return an output now if i want to uh, invoke this function what i'm going to do i'm going to do test me pass a value over there and what is going to do it's going to send me a return value let's take this return value in a variable say retval is in a variable and then next thing that i can do is like i can check like what is this return value right i can do like console dot log of red value right so what do you think that uh, return value is going to be it is going to be testing space and then this particular value one two three once i save this and see it in the output as you see it is testing one two three now what if i don't put this return statement at all over here what do you think is going to be the output value so is it going to uh, output anything yeah of course it is going to it is going to output an undefined even when you are not returning explicitly the function will return an undefined so we get to see undefined right now um, you know in the console right so you see undefined in the console so we understood like how the returning things happen with the function as we now understand what function is and how it behaves i think it's the right time to get into understanding what is a pure function what is the usage of it why should we bother about it at all and what are the side effects and what are side effects impact on a pure function okay let's get to it as a programmer you use functions to perform some task and then finally return an output or produce an output most of the time you do that by passing an argument and working on that right the input but all the while you always want your functions should have certain key characteristic one of the characteristic is it should be predictable so what does it mean it produces a predictable output for the same inputs that you provide to it the second characteristic that you may want is something called readable so it means anyone reading the function as a standalone unit can understand what exactly the purpose of this particular function the next thing that you want to make sure that your function should be reusable it means you can reuse the functionality in multiple places so that you don't have to uh, kind of duplicate the source code or you don't have to alter the source code of the of uh, you know of the caller of the function right and the last thing that you want to make sure that your function is testable as a unit right so these are the characteristic uh, you have to ensure that when you write a function it already has and you know what a pure function has all this above characteristics basically it is a function that produces the same output for the same input so this one you need to really keep in mind produces produces same output for the same input now if i tell this a little bit more technically it means that it always returns the same result when you pass the same arguments if you change the arguments the results will be changed but for the same arguments always the same result so it is predictable and you will see with certain examples that you're coming up with it is how it is readable reusable and the testable as well right so let us first write our first pure function so our first pure function starts with the keyword function let's say the name is say greetings and it takes an argument called name and what it does is basically return a simple string called hello the name right simple function now as a caller when i call this function called say greetings and i pass any string say tapas so as you know as many times i pass the same string tapas it is always going to return me what it is always going to return me hello tapas right there's no change of that now if i change this input for example from tapas i'm changing this input to something called alex what is going to do is like it is going to return me hello alex whatever the times that i actually input the alex to this particular function 
So this is a pure function. It is also readable because we say greetings. It can you can always say that it is going to uh, return some kind of greetings, and then it is always predictable for same input, same output. You can always test this function as an isolation because it does only one task, that is returning a greeting greeting message. And of course, it is reusable in multiple places. Now, how can you make this function impure? Now, usually I should teach you like how can you make an impure function pure, but I'm teaching you other way so that you know like the kind of coding that we do usually that we write probably mostly impure functions and then you know we can recognize them easily right so let's take this one and let this let's make this function a little bit impure so what if i do something like this is let greeting equals to hello and then instead of having this one hello i just say greeting all right so what I'm doing here, before this hello string was local to this particular function, so there was nothing that was actually able to change the string from outside. Now, this particular string is at the outside. So it means this particular uh, value is, is a state value which is outside the control of this say greetings function. Now, there is no guarantee that for the same input, it will always return the same output. How? Because when this particular function is getting invoked, for example, say greetings, there could be a possibility that a network call or, or getting from the API some value or from the cache or local storage, this hello would have got changed to hola. So for example, when I'm making this call, this particular uh, variable value was hello, so it was hello tapas. And then when I'm making the next call somewhere at the down, this part, this actually going to change it to hola Alex. And then again, when I'm calling this same guy, you know, uh, once again, this probably again get got changed to you know something like hello. So you don't have a guarantee that for the same input, this is going to produce the same output, right? So it is not a pure function at all, and it is not a pure function at all because there is an impact, there is an effect of an outer state variable which is not with local to this function whose value might change. This particular effect is called side effect. So this is one of the side effects that can make a function as an impure function. There are multiple other side effects possible. Other side effects possible like you make a network call and the value changes because of a response. You make a DOM manipulation, you know, with some kind of queries and, uh, and the manipulation of it. You actually do logging uh, to a console or to a file. You do IO operation. Basically, you do everything that is not intended for a function's output is called a side effect as simple as that right so we see an example of what is a pure function what is an impure function and what is the side effect right now one side effect we have seen here let us take another example a little bit little more complex example where i can tell you two more side effects so the two more side effects that we are going to learn now one is called mutating the inputs and the second one we'll be seeing like DOM manipulation, Manipu manipulation, okay? So these two side effects. Now what is mutating the inputs means? So a function takes an input. So let's take a function, say function uh, find reverse. What this function does is basically takes two parameters. One is an array of users and one item to find in this particular uh, array of users. But it has a speciality that is always start finding the item in the array from the last instead of the first. That is the objective. So for that, what you can do basically, you can first reverse this user array, say users dot reverse a function, but wait, the user dot reverse function is going to mute it, going to change the order of this array. So what you are doing in this line, you are basically mutating the input directly. That the first concern for a pure function. You are in the verge of making this function as impure. Okay, let us proceed with that. Now you did that. Now users is basically muted it. And even if you, you know, take this in a different variable, like, you know, reversed equals to, but you have already muted the users incoming variable, uh, the actual variable, right? Now what you will do, you will basically do a uh, find function, const say found equals to reversed dot find and here you will be uh, iterating through this particular reverse array and what we'll be doing like you know return the uh, 
object only when the user is equals to item, right? So that's your logic. So what you're doing in the reverse array, you are iterating through, you're taking out one user at a time and then you are actually equating with the thing that you are searching for. If it is found, if it is a match, you're returning that. So now this found uh, variable has the matched element. If at all it is matching, otherwise it is undefined. Now what you are doing, instead of returning this found, you are probably doing something like this document dot get element uh, by id and then you have a um, you know id some id like user uh, user id and then you do a inner text of this found user so what you are doing you are actually finding the user and then there probably a HTML element uh, exists somewhere whose uh, ID is user ID. You are actually getting and uh, acquiring that element and you are setting the value as a text value, this particular user. That's what you are doing in this. Now, this particular function is a impure function because first of all, you are mutating, you know, your input and then instead of returning, you are doing something else. Now, think about this case that someone have and users added something like say a a b c this is for the sake of this demonstration only i don't like to name like that and then you have find reverse function in that you pass users and you're finding for say b so usually you should be able to see like you know the b user found and it is getting set somewhere uh, but I, as a caller of this function, um, you won't know what exactly this function is doing or what is expected out of it until you read the definition of the function. Your expectation could be like, you know, it is going to return that uh, found users or return an undefined, but what is unfortunately happening is like it is not returning, it's setting into HTML uh, element text. So the readability of this is compromised, the predictability of it is compromised, this function find reverse cannot be tested, uh, you know, in isolation because it is doing more than it, what it is supposed to do. It is, uh, it is not a pure function. Now, how do we make this as a pure function? The two side effects that we spoke about, like mutating the input, let's solve that first out of those two. So, what you can do instead of mutating the input itself directly, you can actually take a make a clone of it, your input, and then you mute it so that the state of your input, the original variable is retained. There is no change so that, you know, subsequently you don't lose the uh, state of your, your input. So to clone it, you can use the spread operator that will clone this particular user's uh, array. And on the clone, you are now calling the reverse, right? So now the original users is intact. Second thing is, instead of doing this, instead of uh, you know, doing a DOM manipulation over here. Now you just return the found from here, right? And then now it is more predictable, right? It's always return the, uh, you know, same output for the same input. Um, and also it's like you can actually catch the return value uh, in a variable like const found user equals to. Now after that, you can do whatever you want. You can do this dumb manipulation may be in a separate function altogether. So the responsibility of each of these functions also separated out. Now this particular function is more readable, more predictable. You can test it as a unit because it does only this particular job, doesn't do anything else. So you are actually satisfying all this criteria, all this possible criteria of a pure function over here. So this is this is really, really cool thing for, uh, you know, a programmer to know uh, like how to make a function pure and uh, what can actually cause things as an impure. We have mentioned about DOM manipulation here. And if you are new to understanding DOM query and DOM manipulation, uh, you can subscribe to this channel because I am going to share a lot about DOM manipulation in my upcoming series uh, so that you can learn about it. So, uh, you know, this that's all basically about the concept of a pure function and the side effects. Now, one question might come in your mind, like, can I write uh, a, a application of the program using just the pure function? I think technically, yes, you can always write, but that particular function, that particular application is not going to do much 
because your application program will have side effects like HTTP calls, logging to console, IO operations and many more. So use pure functions in as many places as you find possible. So that at least that part of the code having all these advantages of predictability, readability, uh, you know, uh, testability and all. And then you can isolate the impure part, the side effects, like like a XML HTTP call, like a network call, like you know uh, I/O call. All these impure side effects you can isolate as much as possible in the separate functions. This will improve your program's readability, debuggability, and testability a lot. So I hope you enjoyed learning about uh, pure functions and the side effects, embracing functional programming concepts like pure functions. Reducing side effects will make your code much better to manage and maintain. It means you will get lesser bugs, quick identification of issues, isolating problems, and increased readability and testability of your code. So please go back. I would suggest a book called Functional Light JavaScript by Kyle Simpson. The link is there in the description of the video. Please go ahead and start reading it if you want to kind of take a deep dive into this functional programming concept and want to learn this concept much uh, deeper. By the way, did you know I have a blog too where I share lots about JavaScript, React and web development? Please check that out. I have written hundreds of articles till date. It is blog.greenroots.info. All right. See you then in my next video. Please, please subscribe. Please like or comment this video. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me on my Twitter handle. You can feel free to DM me. The Twitter link is right there in the description. Have a great day. Take care of your health. Thank you very much.